can tell you this, that churches have so much passion and fire, but they don't know what they're doing because they don't have a secret <laughs> place. And the Secret Place Foundation is a foundation before the Bible reading, before uh, corporate prayer. And um, don't get me wrong, Bible reading is so important, you guys. You have to read the Bible. Like, if you don't have the Bible, then uh, you're, you're doing something wrong with your life. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, the secret place, the secret place comes before all that. And it is just a, a, basically a deep intimacy. And um, are you tired of dealing with the same issues over and over again? Are you feeling off or constantly burnt out? Do you want God's supernatural direction in your life to break out of a religious lifestyle, what I call a box lifestyle? If you feel like you're living in a box and you can't get out, a, a, a constant routine, uh, you need a secret place. Uh, if you want to crush the weapons of the enemy, uh, if you constantly are dealing with temptations, if you are constantly sinning, then you need the secret place. Uh, if you uh, want to truly know who you are as a child of God, your inheritance, who you, uh, what power you hold, you need the secret place in your life. So, uh, yeah, read the, read the red. If you said yes to any of these, um, you need a secret place. All right. <laughs> All right. So this is the definition that I came up with. This is still a work in progress. Um, uh, definition of Paul's version, the secret place. A chosen physical place where deeper intimacy and relationship is established between the Heavenly Father and His child through privacy and prayer while being immersed into another dimension of love through the presence of the Holy Spirit. You can see that the important uh, words are read. So, all right, next please, sir. All right, so let's see what the Bible says. Matthew 6, 6 says, But you, when you pray, go into your room, and when you have shut your door, pray to your Father who is in the secret place. And your Father who sees in secret will reward you openly. Openly. Amen. All right, let's just break this down. Uh, but you, when you pray, who is Jesus talking to? Me. Yeah. But in, in, a, in the context of the chapter, chapter before that, uh, this is the Sermon on the Mount, right? The Beatitudes. This is when the great multitude were gathered around him. So this teaching and this discipline is for every believer, every follower, everybody who follows Jesus. But you, when you uh, go into your room and we have shut, you, shut your door, which means the doors of your mind, your emotions, your physical door, pray to your Father who is in the secret place. And um, uh, that, that's obviously the, the most important part of, of this verse. Um, your father is in a secret place and uh, to establish that kind of intimacy. There, there's something weird about the secret place, guys. And um, I can testify to this, that there's a spirit of adoption in the secret place. Come on. It doesn't say, you know, anybody else is in the secret place but the father. If you know who the father is, then you know who you are because you are a child of God. You are a daughter and a son of God and your father is a secret place. So, you know, why wouldn't you want to go in there all the time? You know? Yeah. No, seriously, man. This is so good. All right, next one. <laughs> all right, so uh, to break it all down and to simplify it, um, basically, the secret place is a place of prayer for you and you only. Um, I would like to think it as almost like a selfish time, but, you know, the Father wants to have selfish time with you. And just that time apart to really know you, to really go deeper into his love. And um, this is not your traditional QT. Um, you can't, I don't even know what QT is. Like, what, what is QT? Like, like, coffee shop Bible. Yeah, coffee shop Bible. That, I, I love coffee shop Bible though. It's like, it's like being a social Christian, but um, yeah, it's not, it's not, it's not, it's not your traditional QT because this is, guys, this is something um, way too private to be doing in the open. Mm -hmm. Like, what goes down in the secret place stays in the secret place. <laughs> and the, the, only the fruits of the secret place should be going public. Wow. Right. Um, 
Your time set apart, uh, it's basically your time set apart to share intimacy with the Father. And um, uh, and don't get it twisted, guys. Uh, secret place prayer is way different than intercession. Uh, although it it can, when you practice uh, this prayer, it, it often turns into uh, intercession. But um, uh, for example, say you go to early morning prayer, you pray for two hours, come back at night, pray for two hours, you still need to have that secret place prayer in your day. Hmm. Like you are not done unless you have the secret place prayer in your day because that is completely different from anything else. Hmm. All right, next please. <coughs> All, right. All right, now uh, we're, we're in the water, we're sowing the seeds. All right. <laughs> All right, um, the sowing in this context of the secret place it just basically means giving your time to the secret place. And the, 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 uh, the, the passage that goes with this is Galatians 6, 7 through 9. Um, it says, Do not be deceived. God is not mocked. For whatever man sows, that he will also reap. For he who sows to his flesh will of the flesh reap corruption. But he who sows to the spirit will of the spirit reap everlasting life. And let us not grow weary while doing good, for in due season we shall reap if we do not lose heart. Amen. 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 So the Bible promises that whatever you sow, you shall reap. Next. And so basically what this means is do not listen to the lies in the secret place. Because when you get alone and when you're at night on your knees, you're going you're gonna to hear the lies. And it's going to uh, sound a little like this. This isn't doing anything for me. This isn't doing anything for my life. This is a waste of time. This is a waste of effort. I should go to sleep. All right, we need to uh, just, just kind of like rip the mind of this generation apart. Because this generation is built off of instant gratitude. We just want to feel good. And whatever feel good, feels good, it's what we need. So we need to begin to think of prayer in more of a long-term sense. Mm. It's really cultivating. Your life is a garden. You're really cultivating uh, your hidden life. And um, uh, this entire presentation is based off of Secrets of the Secret Place by Bob Sorg. And, um, Bobby. Yeah, Bobby. And, um, <laughs> and this, this, uh, this quote I found was so profound. It says, what we sow today will require an entire season of growth before results are manifest. Mm -hmm. And um, as, you, as you really uh, take this in, um, if you keep on sowing and sowing and sowing, uh, on the same day, you are not going to reap your fruit. You have to go through a season of sowing, of complete tilling before you see the fruit. And then if you think deeper about this, if you keep on sowing and sowing and sowing, and you reap your fruit, but you sow while you reap your fruit, then your life is going to start changing, guys you are constantly going to reap the fruit of the secret place. And Proverbs 12, 11 just uh, solidifies that. He who tills his land will be t satisfied with bread. So yeah, till meaning that uh, preparing, um, really, uh, yeah, preparing. Uh, yeah, I don't even know any synonyms, but yeah. All right, next please, sir. <laughs> oh, that's hard to read. Oh, sorry, I forgot to change the font. <laughs> Good. All right, oh, you can read it. All right. Yeah. All right, um, all right, guys. Um, if you please, please like listen to this part because if you don't get anything out of tonight, please, um, please like listen to this. Uh, Psalm ninety-one, famous passage: uh, He who dwells in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the uh, Almighty. And um, dwell meaning uh, reside, to live in, to have a home in that place. But um, what always confused me was um, verse 7. A thousand may fall at your side and ten thousand at your right hand, but it shall not come near you. And um, the longest, I was confused for the longest time what this meant. Um, because uh, it just, you can really take it into a lot of perspective, but um, I think I found out uh, through this book um, it says, a thousand may fall at your side and ten thousand at your right hand. What it's talking about is you and your brothers that are going into battle, that are going into a war. All right. And a thousand of your brothers are getting killed. They're dying. Ten thousand at your right hand, but it doesn't come near you. 
And why is that? It's because of verse 1, he who dwells in the secret place. Mm -hmm. So Psalm 91 is not talking about anybody but the secret place Christian. Mm -hmm. Secret place Christians are different than regular brothers and sisters. He who dwells in the secret place shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And um, our homework for tonight, just go home, read this Psalm 91 in the context of a, a person that that dwells in the secret place, and it, it's just going to broaden your perspective, and it's just going to, you know, everything that uh, that you th thought you knew about this Psalm 91 would just completely change. Mm -hmm. All right, next. <laughs> all right, um, all right. The key to the secret place is what I found in my walk with uh, Christ um, during these uh, awesome two years of my life. Um, you know, I was so tired of just reading the Bible and prayer at one time, and, you know, it didn't really occur to me that Jesus was a real person, you know, because we all, so, so often we compare ourselves with somebody else in the church or this model that's in the Bible, but we don't have, the, the, the problem is we don't have the right heart to approach the Word of God. So the key to the secret place, the key to even Christianity, is relationship. Mm. Right. Uh, the secret place is where Jesus becomes a real person mm. instead of a model, right. which is religion. Amen. And it, it freaks me out sometimes. Because um, even, uh, I was talking to Sarah the other day, she can testify to this. In the secret place, you get freaked out because Jesus becomes so real that there is an overhanging presence in your room and it's so powerful and it, it just grips you with fear because it is so powerful. It freaks you out. So um, when you're in the secret place, you will experience this. When you sow the seeds, when you start bearing the fruit, you will experience that Jesus is realer than uh, just the ground we stand on right now. Amen. Uh, all right. That's good. All right, next. So, um, going to uh, the Bible, what did Jesus' secret place look like? And um, in Matthew 17, yeah, what did Jesus' secret place look like? All right, in Matthew 17, 2 through 4, it says, There he was transfigured before them, his face shone like the sun, and his clothes became as white as the light. Just then, there appeared before them Moses, Elijah, talking with Jesus. Peter said to the Jesus, Lord, it is good for us to be here. If you wish, I will put up three shelters, one for you, one for Moses, and one for Elijah. You see, Peter, James, and John had the honor and the privilege and the, uh, just, just the even... Uh, the honor to go up the mountain with Jesus. Jesus when Jesus um, prayed in the secret place, he usually went to a mountain or the wilderness. And this day, Peter, James, and John actually went up with him to the mountain, to the secret place. And this is what happens. All right, his face shone like the sun and his clothes bank became as white as the light. So in the secret place, what this is telling us is where Jesus is fully glorified. We see the full glory of who Jesus is. We see just the uh, infinite glory, going from glory to glory in the secret place. And um, Peter was just having a blast. He said, Lord, it is good for us to be here. Meaning, like, this is awesome. Like, if you wish, I will put up three shelters, one for you, one for Moses, and one for Elijah. So, meaning that, Lord, let's stay up here forever. Like, let's, let's not go down the mountain. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, yeah, this is where Peter wanted to stay because there was so much glory in this place. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, I, I, yeah, I know. I, I actually love this passage, but I never really, like, uh, you know, saw it through the secret place lens. But yeah. Um, next. All right. Um, so where is your secret place? And, uh, in Matthew 17, 1, Jesus went up to a mountain. Um, Jesus would also go into wilderness at other times, um, and uh, just to lonely places, it says in other passages. But um, 
So in other words, um, you have no excuse. Um, you have no excuse to say, I don't have a secret place to pray in. Because if Jesus could have done it, then you can do it. Wow. Jesus was the most popular guy ever. Mm. You know how much people he had to dodge to get into a secret place? <laughs> like, so you have no excuse not to find a secret place. Wow. Right. And um, your car does not suffice when you're trying to have a secret place prayer. And um, I was talking to Joyce about this, and your car is just not a good idea. And um, because for a number of things, there are so many distractions around you. There is so much. There are so many things that can happen in your car. And uh, usually, when I'm in my in, when I'm in my car praying, I can't, you know, I can't break through, um, just because of the outside world. Like I'm scared somebody will see me or um, just stuff like that. <laughs> all right, so I gave you I gave you guys a little instructions. Um, all right, when you are trying to find a secret place, uh, you should pick a lonely place. Um, this is biblical. I'm not just trying to be uh, depressing. Um, it says Jesus went to a lonely place, so yeah, that's biblical. All right, um, uh, pick a place without distraction, uh, no open doors, uh, which means uh, nothing. Um, Nothing with, like, you know, people are around or, like, maybe somewhere in the woods. Like, I remember uh, um, Pastor Arnold said, like, some uh, David Wilkerson spent hours in the woods just by himself. And that's where he uh, really received his anointing. So uh, just uh, a place without open doors. And um, let's see, uh, pick a place of easy access, preferably your room. Um, your room is biblical, but sometimes that's hard in this generation because... Uh, we share rooms, um, our roommates, you know, their distractions too. But um, yeah, pick a place of easy access. Um, you don't have to, but I found this so good because there are, uh, there are urgent times, guys. And, you know, there are times where you really need to pray and something comes up, you need to go pray. And if, you're, if your secret place is like on the, on the other side of town, then it's just not good. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah, and um, all right. This is really important, guys. All right, you have to pick a holy. There you go, second one. Uh, uh. <laughs> Okay. All right. Um, so the last one is really important, guys. All right. You have to pick a holy place. And uh, what I mean by this is there cannot be any, op well, you can, but there cannot be any open doors to sin in the secret place. Um, you can't just go in prayer and spend time with the Father and then turn around and start sinning in the same place because that just destroys the spiritual atmosphere. And that's why uh, your car is not a good place for the secret place because if you just uh, if you just have the best prayer of your life in your car and then somebody like like cuts you off and you start cussing you start fussing and stuff like that that totally destroys the spiritual atmosphere of that place. So keep it holy. All right, next. All right. So when should you go to the secret place? It should be every chance you get. Because once you start, you just can't stop, man. Like, you, you have to make it your number one desire to grow in intimacy with Jesus. And um, I tell that to you guys right now, but as you start doing this, as you start cultivating your time with Jesus and your time with the Father, that's going to be your ultimate goal every day is to spend time with Him. It's not going to be forced, but it's just going to be so good that you want every chance you get with Him to be in that place, to be in private, and um, I can't, I can't lie. Like uh, sometimes when like I'm at the movies with you guys, I'll be thinking in my mind, it's like, man, I, I really want to go home and and pray in the secret place, and I really want to go home and pray. But yeah, it it will it, if it's not your number one desire, it will be your number one desire the more you spend time with him. But you have to be wise about this. This doesn't mean to live in your secret place. 24-7. Jesus says to go, so we have to go. But I think of the secret place as a place where uh, a recharge of just uh, 
just a alone quiet time with the Lord and just to just be wise about this. And if you're if your secret place is in the forest, um don't go out at night, there's bears and stuff. <laughs> yeah, me and Joyce were talking about this. Yeah, there's all kinds of stuff in the forest. So be wise when you go to your secret place, all right? So yeah, and um also a side note that um all right, you you are gonna be closer to God through the secret place prayer. <laughs> you are going to be closer with him. But in order to go deeper and closer still is to obey him. And whatever he tells you, you have to do. You have to obey him. He says, those who obey me, you love me. So you have to, God's going to speak to you more, but you have to obey in order to be closer to him. All right, next. All right. All right. So we're getting into the house. All right. How should you pray in secret? All right. First, always invite the Holy Spirit and be led by him. Wait patiently upon the Lord, because I'll tell you right now, if you, um, some of you go home and try this, you are not gonna expect, you, there's not gonna be any miracles that happen. There's, there rarely, there is rarely miracles that happen, you know, the first time you go in there. So you have to wait patiently, really sow that seed and really cultivate uh, your hidden life. And um, this is really important. You have to make it your joy to sit at his feet. And even if you don't hear anything, and even if you don't, if you're not doing anything, just enjoy it, man. This is a time of pure love, and this is a time of pure intimacy with the Father. And as you uh, sit at his feet, listen to his heart. And I say his heart and not his voice because in the secret place, this is where you become one. And whatever the Father feels, you start feeling. And whenever you go into intercession, this is really cool. Um, sometimes uh, you'll just, you'll pray something, and then your Father will respond, re respond with the heart cry instead of a voice. That you, you are one with the Father in the secret place, and He responds to you by His heart instead of His voice. All right, um, and if you don't have peace, joy, or assurance at the end, do it again. <laughs> like, straight up, man. I'm, I'm tired of seeing people um, just praying it up, praying it up, praying it up, and still coming out uh, just pissed off, like, depressed. I'm, I'm tired. That, that is so, like, like, you can't do that. Like, you did something wrong. Like, you cannot come out of prayer all pissed off or, or depressed. So if you don't have these three things, or at least one of those, just do it again. <laughs> All right, next. That's good, man. That's good. And this is um, one of the most profound things I've ever read. Um, things don't change when I talk to God. Things change when God, God talks to me. Yeah. And um, this, uh, when I read this, I, I truly understood the, the importance of letting God speak to me. And um, Bob Sorg even goes to as far as the word here, H-E-A-R, is the most important word of the Bible because every leader, every, every anointed one had to listen, had to hear the voice of God in order to act upon salvation's plan. Wow. So, um, yeah, when you're in the secret place, make it your duty to hear his voice, to hear his heart, to do everything for him to dominate the conversation instead of you just babbling a bunch of things at God. Let God speak to you and edify yourself, edify your heart. That's right. All right. Uh, next. I hate saying next. I wish. But all right, we're going into um, the fruits of the secret place. And this is, uh, these are just um, biblical uh, references that uh, throughout, throughout my walk I kind of noticed. And um, yeah, we're just going to go right into it. All right, first example, um, Moses and Joshua. Um, Exodus thirty-three eleven. The Lord would speak to Moses face to face as one speaks to a friend. And the context of this passage is that Moses will go alone in the tents of meeting and talk face to face with God as one speaks to a friend. And in Moses' secret place, God was a friend. God spoke to him face to face 
His glory was unlimited to Moses in the secret place. How do I know that? Because later in the passage it says, uh, Moses, this is a famous passage where Moses asked God, now show me your glory. But then later on in the passage it says, God says, I can't show you my glory, I can't show you my face or you'll die. But here it says, the Lord spoke to Moses face to face, only in the secret place. And then Moses would return to camp, but his young age Joshua, son of Nun, did not leave the tent. Which means one of two things. Joshua, we all know that guy, he conquered so many, he conquered Jericho. He, he was the leader after Moses. God used him in such a huge way. This passage means one of two things. Joshua would speak face to face with God in the tent of meeting, or Joshua was so desperate for the presence of God, that he would bask in the presence of the residue that was left from Moses and God's conversation. Wow. So Joshua, he gave everything to the secret place. Mm. And look at his inter- inheritance, it's the land of Canaan. Mm. He inherited everything. Mm. Uh, next example. All right, uh, Cornelius, I bet half of you don't know who this is. Um, <laughs> All right, it says in Acts 10 2, Cornelius was a devout man and one who feared God with all his household, who gave all alms generously to the people and prayed to God always. And I just want to highlight that part, pray to God always. And Acts 10 30 says, so Cornelius said four days ago, I was fasting until this hour and at the ninth hour, I prayed in my house and behold, a man stood before me and bright clothing. All right, as you see here in Acts 10 2, it says that Cornelius prayed to God always. And then in uh, Acts 10 30, this is in his secret place. I was praying in my house, fasting until this hour, and the glory of the Lord just showed up. Hmm. This man saw Jesus, a Gentile. He was the first Gentile believer. In the secret place, hmm. Jesus showed up to a Gentile before any Gentile received the Holy Spirit. This is amazing. It's almost like God was like, Cornelius, I'm going to give you the Holy Spirit because you are the model that I want to base these Gentiles off of. You are the model. You are the man that I want these Gentiles to be. Wow, that's good. Yeah, and this is, this is, uh, yeah, it's so good. This is amazing. Like, this, Cornelius was the first Gentile to receive the Holy Spirit, and it, it is through the constant tilling and constant cultivating in the secret place. Mm-hmm. Uh, next example. All right, um, Jesus, we know that guy. Um, <laughs> all right, all right, uh, all right. Yeah, buddy. All right, um, I heard I heard something just so profound the other day, man, and I I had to like just put it in. All right, Jesus's ministry. All right, um, John 5, 19 says, So Jesus explained, I tell you the truth, the Son can do nothing by himself. He does, only what the, he, he does only what he sees the Father doing. Whatever the Father does, the Son also does. And uh, I heard this in um, some, some old guy at IHOP. It was just so profound. It says, man... You think, he was talking to a seminary professor, he's like, what do you think uh, Jesus' ministry was? And he said, "Um, of course, it's preaching, teaching, and healing. And then he was like, no, you're wrong. Jesus' ministry was prayer. Mm. Jesus didn't do anything he didn't see the Father doing. Mm. And how can Jesus see what his Father is doing without spending time with him? In that secret place. So prayer was Jesus' main ministry. Without prayer, prayer was that foundation, that secret place. And being intimate with God was that foundation before he started teaching, preaching, and healing everything. And um, in Luke 6, uh, 12 13, now it came to pass in those days that he went out to the mountain to pray. And continued all night in prayer to God. And when it was day, he called his disciples to himself. And from them, he chose 12, whom he also named apostles. And as you see in verse 12, before 
Jesus decides to pick a people that will change the world, that will change the face of the earth, that that would uh, just uh, fall into salvation's plan. He came and prayed on the mountain, and he prayed to God all night. He stayed in the secret place all night before deciding who would change the world, and that is his apostles. And so I just want to add, if you're going through anything in your life right now, where any big decision you're going through in your life right now, the, the best place to get an answer is in the secret place. Because the Father knows you. You are his son, you are his daughter. And he is your Father, he knows you. And if you're, you're gonna uh, choose or decide something that's gonna change, that you think is gonna change the course of your life, you need to get your, you, you need to go to the secret place. <laughs> All right, um, you know, that's it for the slideshow. And, um, but uh, this, yes. yeah. sorry, I was so nervous, but I never really uh, made a prezi. But um, that's the end of the slideshow, but um, it's, this is the, the beginning of some of you guys' lives. Like, some of you guys, you know, don't get me wrong, the leaders here are, are, are faithful. They know this is the place. But other, other guys, you got to start living. Um, you don't live until you live in a secret place. And it is that connection with the Father, that, that spirit of adoption that falls on you so hard. It, it's just so hard. You get so much revelation from the secret place because you know your Father is in the secret place. Yeah. So why don't you want to be in the secret place all the time? That's right. Your father should give you instructions to get out because you stay in there so long. You know, this is, this is the, the amount of intimacy that the father wants to pour out to us. That every, every waking moment, he, want us, he wants us to think about him. He wants us to share in relationship, to share in intimacy with him. So why aren't we going to the secret place? You know, it, it's... You know, the story of my life, um, you know, as you all know, I, I was doing a bunch of drugs and stupid things. But, you know, like, after I got saved, you know, I really wasn't going into the secret place, you know. I was reading the Bible. I was, you know, um, having prayer with Pastor Arnold. But uh, just my alone time, my intimacy wasn't really established. Um, it, there wasn't really a foundation beneath that Bible reading, that prayer, because my heart, it, it wasn't right, so my, the freedom, the freedom wasn't there, you know, the freedom of a Christian life. So it was until one day I was just tired of this, and I, I remember what Pastor Arnold said, yeah, just get on your knees and pray, and then that's exactly what I did. I got on my knees, I prayed in between classes at home, and after that, it just, it changed my life. Like, right then I found out that prayer in the secret place, that prayer of intimacy and relationship to Jesus uh, would just give me complete freedom. And this is what you're going to have when you start to cultivate this life in the secret place, that you are going to find yourself complete in complete freedom. Because why? Because there is a spirit of adoption in the secret place because you know your father and the father knows you. If you know your father, you know yourself because you are his son. You know, there is complete freedom in the secret place. And what you cultivate in that secret place, nobody knows but you. Nobody ever knows but you. And that is the hidden life, the cultivating the hidden life with you and God. Only the fruits will show. Only the fruits in your life will just bear to other people. Your, your freedom is contagious. Your freedom is contagious when you bring that out. Mm -hmm. And if we bring that out, if everybody goes home and spends time, and brings the fruits of their secret place. Come on. This place is just gonna burst with revival. Oh, like, man. This is there's gonna be revival for days. Yes. Wow. Like, seriously, man. Yeah. This is yeah. Yes. So let's go. So yeah. Yeah, uh, let's just close in prayer.